Charlotte Delirian, and welcome to the Wednesday stream. And immediately, I need to take my earrings out because I did not think about them before I put the headset on, and they immediately stabbed me in the back of the skull. <laughs> I just, I, I don't think about it. I wear post earrings throughout the day, and then I go to stream and forget I'm wearing the earrings until I put on the headphones. And so suddenly I just have two bits of metal going right, right, right here, right here. But hello! Dags the Barbarian, HMK118, welcome into the chat. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hang on. Hang on. I gotta do it right. Hi. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I hope your week is going well. Mine has been going pretty well. Deep cleaned my, well, I say deep cleaned. I hardcore cleaned the floor in my bathroom and we cleaned, we, we gave the litter box a good rinse with the hose yesterday and I gave my toilet a good scrub. I still need to like get the the counter and the sink area and the tub could use a scrub but the floor is cleaner than it's been in a little bit i won't say how long because that's embarrassing so that's going well we will get to the game in a little bit but you know we gotta we gotta we gotta give it a few more minutes for people to roll in we will also do our tarot reading in a moment which i forgot to go grab a deck again so we'll be using the halloween oracle one more time what else is going on oh yeah we reached our 75 follower goal on Sunday, so we now have a sub goal to hopefully hit 10 subscribers here on the channel. So if you are able to subscribe here on Twitch, I very much appreciate it. There should be a button somewhere on the channel to do so. And subscribing gives you extra perks, like when I eventually get y'all some emotes, subscribers will get access to most of, to all of those emotes. Followers will probably get a few that they're allowed to use, but subs will get all of the emotes. Subscribers also get double earnings, I believe. Yeah, on those channel points, those fancy little keys down at the bottom left of the chat, which means you could earn points to contribute to rewards or community challenges faster. And there's an ad going, so anybody who's not following, who's not subscribed, isn't hearing me anyway. <laughs> we, will, we will get into that stream and into the game after the tarot reading in just a moment while I have y'all here. Speaking of channel points, I need to start the new community challenge. There it goes across the top of the chat. So we are saving up for community challenge craft stream number four here on the channel. I upped the ante just slightly from last time. So 12,600 points is the goal and you have 31 days left apparently. You got, you've got a month to do it. The more you watch, the more points you earn, the more points you earn, the more easily you can get to that goal. Dags the Barbarian, thank you for contributing the first 2,000. We're already 15% of the way there. <laughs> and based on how much work I got done today, next time we do a craft stream, it will be for Sybil. What the heck? Ah, it's stuff from my headset. Good Lord. The, 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 the vinyl right here and right inside this headband is flaking off so badly right now. I literally had a piece of it stuck to my neck just now. What the fuck? Okay, I need to scoot this over ever so slightly so I can see the time code for how long we've been running. Ace, Ace, my love, can you stop scratching? Thank you. <laughs> She's also, hang on. She's gonna move when I move her, but I have to get her on screen. We do have a bramble back here on her bed. There's an ace in the back corner. HMK118, thank you for your 2,000 points to that new craft stream. We're now 31% of the way there. <laughs> I'm sure P. Tagney will drop in at some point and drop another 2,000. <laughs> Hello, Duchess. So we have three animals in the room. Hang on. I gotta steady myself on the floor so that my chair is not trying to rotate instead of the basket moving. Not trying to dip you out of the bed. But we have a Duchess hanging out in the bed. She was feeling very, very lovey and very social earlier. Not sure what the keys are for, but I have a lot. Okay, so I've explained this a couple times, but you might've missed it in stream when it was explained. The keys are my version of channel points, which you can start earning as soon as a sub, uh, uh, a streamer makes affiliate. For every certain amount of time you watch my stream, Green Team, thank you for your 2000 points. Holy shit. All right. For every certain amount of time you watch my stream, when it is live, you will earn natively 
those points. You can also earn them through the predictions by wagering them. You wager what points you have on the predictions. And if you're in the side that votes correctly, you get, you at least get your points back. But if other people voted against what you voted for, just like betting, basically, you have a chance to make back more than you spent, to put it in way too many words. You can then spend those keys on various rewards. Like if you click on that key button, the button with the key underneath the chat box on the stream, there's, so the, the community challenge will be right at the top of that pop-up and you can scroll through various rewards that you can also spend them on. I've been working on Alice's new bodice. It is most of the way done. The outer shell, is almost all the way complete or is complete it's all of it's the linen the interfacing the buckram and the cording in the twill tape channels ace please stop bless you sitting there licking his fucking ham hock so yeah i've been working on that all of the outer shell is together and the lining pieces are all sewn together so now i just need to attach the lining do the bias binding and make some eyelets and she done. Okay, some trimming is also gonna have to happen because it's definitely longer than it needs to be. So I'm gonna flatline it, which is a term. I'm gonna attach the lining is what I should say. And then I will have to do a fitting to see where the waist is hitting to avoid it bending and creasing in that area because the hips are gonna get in the way of its current shape. I definitely made it longer than it needed to be. Once it's trimmed down, we'll do the binding and then we'll put some eyelets in and she'll be all ready to go for Alice to use. I have rambled enough. I will be munching a little bit. We heated up some leftover crawfish fries. All right, so let us switch over to the full cam and get the program on top, please. There we go. And we'll do our tarot card and as a reminder this if you saw any of the social posts you will know this already but this is our last little stream of animal crossing while we take a break because on sunday we are starting the new story mode sit back relax hang out we're about to do our tarot card reading from the lovely halloween oracle once again from stacy demarco and then we will switch over to animal crossing and we'll run around my island for a little bit. Ooh, my uh, my my nocturnal island ordinance should be active this time as well. So, I'm curious to see what card pops up today because I've been channeling one of my deities a lot today. Getting a lot of messages from her in the last 24 hours. Come on, one card, please. Man, you're being tight-lipped tonight. Come on. There it is. Aha. We have pulled the lamp, which is a card of remembrance. Here it is. I light a single candle within a lamp for you, a single flame in the darkness that reflects my heart so true. Whilst it is tradition to carve a jack-o'-lantern to scare away the spirits, it was an older tradition still to light a candle or a lamp on Halloween night and leave it at the window as a loving guide home for those who have passed. Both as a symbol of remembrance and also as a kind of leaving the lights on for those who may wish to come home, the lamp was left on to illuminate the night and perhaps even the sadness that was felt because of the passing. This card reminds us that it is a positive thing to remember those who have passed by celebrating their life rather than mourning their death. For those with whom we did not have an easy relationship and even those we did not like, leave us with valuable lessons. Sometimes we learn more from our nemesis than we do from our friend, and so the darkness can illuminate our strengths and our true values so we may live them more clearly and fully. Regardless of whether it's taken literally and is referring to someone dying or passing away, or if it's a more symbolic loss of someone, someone a relationship ending, in whatever peaceful of terms it or it it may have or just losing touch with somebody whatever the case may be if you have recently lost someone or if you're still every now and then dealing with the the grief and the ramifications of 
losing someone in the past for whatever reason. Try to keep in mind that if it was someone you had a rocky relationship with, it's okay to think back on that person if they're still alive to wonder how they're doing. It's okay to, to deal with that every now and then because it's natural, you know? Obviously try not to linger on it too long, but do what you can to take away whatever lesson you were meant to learn from that person while you had them in your life and move on better and stronger for having learned that lesson and just let go of everything else. If you are mourning the loss of this person because you really, really liked this person, you had a really good relationship with them, try not to let the grief overshadow all of the happiness you had with this person while they were still around. I, I fully agree with the write-up in this guidebook and I am a firm believer that while you do need to take time to mourn and to grieve the loss of a person in your life, you should take more time to look back fondly on all of the good times and remember all of the happiness and all of the joy and celebrate that person's life and everything good you had with that person while they were around rather than simply mourning and being sad. Because if nothing else, I'm quite sure that whoever it was would rather that you go on as happy as you can be in spite of their loss, if that makes sense. And that is a poignant one for me right now because springtime has always been hard for me. Like most people talk about seasonal affective happening in the winter and mine doesn't usually actually start to hit until oh, the beginnings of spring actually. Like at the end of February is when it starts to hit me really hard assuming that what I'm dealing with is in fact seasonal affective in the first place. But I definitely, I have a harder time mentally and emotionally getting through the end of February into March. And it's because I have several days in that span of time, all connected with loved ones that I have lost. And now there is a date in like May or June, I think May, that also falls into that. But you know, Whenever things hit, I just try to look back on all the, the good things with the ones that I had enough time with. Uh, one of them was my grandfather. I was five years old when we lost him, so I didn't have very much waking memory of him, unfortunately. I try to think back on all the stories my mom tells me of who he was and uh, what he was like. But anyway, so yeah, celebrate life more than you mourn death is is the takeaway there and learn all the lessons you can from all of the people who've passed through your life whether you had good relationships with them or not let us shift gears and start our game shall we we are in the last vestiges of of daylight here an ordinance update. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mentioned that. The Night Owl Ordinance is in full effect starting today. Shops will close later, so hopefully that's helpful for anyone who's a busy bee during the day. Or who just is nocturnal. And, oh, there's a visitor at the campsite. We might be getting a new villager then. I hope the entire island joins me in giving our guests a warm welcome. All right, the audio is clipping dreadfully there. And my camera froze already. Come back, camera. There it goes. <gasps> Flix here! Hi, buddy. Yep, all right. So we're gonna catch all the boogs. We'll catch all the bugs we spot tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up you. Oh, damn it. I thought that was weeds. Damn it. Oh well. Hey, Wargris! Welcome in. Songbird says she likes your animal cry. Yeah, she has told me. I appreciate it. Three sets of 465 sit-ups, 900 push-ups, and 603 squats. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, my pergola. Hi. 
Wrong button. Damn it. I keep doing that. Wrong button, damn it. Got him. Ha ha. Long locust. That's a grasshopper, my guy. That is a grasshopper. Um, take a bite of my food before it gets cold. Totally not Russian dancing men. All right. It's still so funny hearing the sound of my streams in another room. Where did the little guy go? Look at him go! Oh, there's a fuck ton of these things over here. Damn. I almost hit the wrong button again. That time I did hit the wrong button. I keep hitting Y instead of A. Which works to kick the dirt back into the hole and for picking stuff up, but it does not work for using my tool. Ah. Wait, how much? Oh, I have just enough. Okay. Here we go. At least the inventory button is the same. Put away. Take out 10,000. Berry and hole. Boosh. All right. Uh, twig. Uh, weeds. Twig. We'll be here. Oh, hello. Are you a god? I almost shot my bowl of food to the floor. Cherry. <laughs> For your do rag. Uh, might intentionally lose because I don't need a do rag, but. <laughs> It's probably the card game. What's- oh, okay. So it's not the number card game, it's like just a guessing game. Oh, cool. Alright. I didn't want the do-rag, it's fine. Aww. I feel you there, Cherry. Alright, um, I guess I need to go talk to Tom about how to get Cherry to move in. Because I, I think I like Cherry. There's a crap ton of shells. Alright, let's clear anything that's up here first. Is that a fish I just saw, or was that... There's a, there's a bug right there. Almost hit the wrong button again. What is that? What is that? It should have stayed in the water, all right. Oh, it's huge. Uh, well, at least it doesn't need to go in the museum. I don't have to bother poor Blathers about it. Oh, that was awful. It, it just, it looked like some, it, it looks like a giant cockroach. <sighs> Actually, you know what I didn't consider? I should probably catch one of the cockroaches in my house, but I don't have any cockroaches in my house because I keep a clean house. But I should probably catch one the next time I have bugs in my house so that I can donate it. Uh, I don't like the cockroaches. That's a big fish. Damn it! I hit the wrong button again. I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, A. Damn it! Uh, <laughs> fuck. <sighs> I thought 
but surely it was going to grab it that fourth time. Alright, let's see. I scared something off. Damn it. The hole right in front of you. Thank you. There's a fossil. Thank you for actually filling the hole instead of picking flowers. Neat. But yeah, Sunday we start our new story mode. Catching all the bugs. Wrong button. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep hitting the wrong button. Somehow, some way. Some way. Been up to watch Lightyear to Lightyear was alright. It was meh. It was a very unnecessary movie. I'll I'll say that. It was like it was cute. Socks is cool, but yeah, nah. It was an unnecessary movie. Um, I've been working on Alice's bodice, trying to get it done, cause my girl needs her 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 upgrade. Um, and it's almost done. I'm gonna I'm gonna be strict with myself to stream no more than three hours tonight, so that I can get back to work on it tonight after the stream. As soon as I finish that, I can get to work on another costume. And when I'm done with Sybil, I think I will delve into some smaller sewing projects that have been sitting around for a while. Bruh. Thank you. Before I do another costume. Just, just, to, just to take it a little easy, you know? I have several things that need mending. And... I have several pillowcases that I've received in my Spooky Box subscription that need pillows. So I get to make custom size pillows for that. And one of them will be particularly fun to figure out because it's a heart shape instead of a rectangle. That's a gyroid. I know because I'm the one who buried it. But yeah, I have some pillowcases and some mending. And will you kick the dirt into the hole, please? Thank you. I'm not sure how much of a video is necessary for making, like, sofa cushions or mending any of the things I'm mending. So I might just do, like, I don't know, I might do a simple, here's everything I sewed this week video for all of that lump it all into one thing wait what are you looking for what i missed what he said he was looking for damn it by the time i get this going ugh okay well, if I spot a random item on the ground, I'll know it's his. Sold. Gala. Who? Bruh. All right. I thought I had to talk to Nook about getting somebody else to move in. That's annoying. No wonder Cherry wasn't, uh... Oh, hey, look. There it is. Boone. Boone, my boy. You were right next to it, my man! Cool. Was right next to it. Moth. 
Seen the Lego Animal Crossing? My Walmart finally has it. No, I have not. I did not know that was a thing. Did I get all the rest of the shells here? Yes, I did. Alright. Another Tiger Beetle. Why not? Damn it. In fairness, it was behind the tree. So, who the fuck? I'm curious. Who- whomst? Okay. Whoops. Hey, Flick! It's not about an atlas moth. I'm sorry, I'm speeding through the dialogue too fast. Have you found any bugs yet? Because I'll buy any kind. Any kind. And if you want to commission a piece of my art, just let me know. Okay, bye. I have bugs to sell. Take my boogles! Give me money. A whole swarm! The best day ever! Six thousand bells. Yes, please. Ash, thank you. Let's... take some time to actually eat my food for a minute here because there is a gnat that is determined that it's gonna be his food so hi hey madam me touching your butt was a byproduct of me petting you you don't get to be mad yeah that's what i thought seven people wow hello seven people you're purring at me now uh-huh that's what i thought <laughs> crux of the subject hello welcome in oh we got a playful Duchess. <laughs> we love a playful Duchess. Who is distracted by the shifting bamble. Boop. 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 Nine people. Hello, nine people. <laughs> Right. I'm trying to get some of my food eaten before the gnat comes back and decides it's his. Here, I'll switch back over. I know we'll be pressing buttons in between taking bites. Because y'all don't need to just stare at me eating in silence. <laughs> moving on up. Shmoving. Shmoving and grooving. Mm. I need to get the fossils assessed before I can do that. Keep this over here. Not bad. Approach me at fifteen, sixteen, fifteen. All right. Ew! Another chandelier. An elegant chair. I will think about it. Oh, too much, too much, too much. I know you already have the fossils. I just need to know what they are so I can sell them. I like blathers a lot. I appreciate that the museum does not require a button press to go in and out of it. Well, into it. Why did that not make noise? My stream labels didn't catch it either. Bonk. Um, okay. Maybe it's because you used your prime. I'm not sure. No, that, that can't be right, because... Yeah, no, I've gotten... I don't know why I didn't get a notification of that, but crux of the subject, 
Welcome to the coven. Thank you for subscribing. I'm annoyed that the sound cue didn't go off. Did y'all get the sound cue? Because I didn't get a sound cue. Maybe it's delayed. Did use prime. Okay. Okay. No, uh, no worries then. Twitch is probably acting up then. And that's annoying. Uh, you either should have gotten surprise, motherfucker, or wow, as your sound cue. I'm annoyed that it did not pop, but that's okay. Like stream labels and my activity feed on on my my stream manager are not showing it for whatever reason. I only spotted the announcement in chat. But anyway, let's sell these fossils. <laughs> I'm doing too many things at once. Have I noticed it pop in stream labels? Bitch is whining, begging for food, and now Mike is meowing to tell him to shut up. Oh no! <laughs> Silly kitties. Quack. All right. I had too many windows. There we go. What do I even get? Tarot wing, megaloside, skull, tail, diplo neck. <laughs> Come on. Cha Chang. Sold. Oh, thank you very much. Thought cats only meowed to humans. <laughs> Maybe Mike was talking shit. <laughs> ah! I want to go check the Able Sisters before I buy anything here. Dax the Barbarian, thank you for initiating five new coven members. Holy shit, we just met our sub goal. Thank you. Um, Stitches Arigato, Angry Papa Pug, Yanis, Yanis, K Bomb, and Nobody's Home. Welcome to the coven if you are here watching. Hello. Um, okay. So, um. There it goes. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna set a new goal here. Cubs goal of ten achieved. There it goes. Welcome to the coven. We got eleven people. Yay! Let's make this one red. I said it like that, and now I I'm thinking of um oh Ludwig von Drake's song about colors. All right. So now we have a bits goal. And that is on the stream, okay. So many things are happening. Not sure anyone has it, okay. Fair enough. I do not want an oil barrel bathtub. I'm turning right back around and I'm selling that recipe. So. As Dax has pointed out, y'all might not know who uh, Professor Ludwig von Drake is. I shall explain. America explain! Because not everybody is as deep into Disney lore as I am. And yet, I'm not as deep as some people are. I am no expert. But, there is, similar to Donald, and Daisy, and Scrooge McDuck, and the, the triplets, the nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. There is another duck character named Professor Ludwig von Drake. And he is German! And he looks like Scrooge, my, but in a lab coat. And with like, he's got, he, his feathers are done in sort of the way where he's bald on the top, but his hair is long in the back. My camera froze again. And he doesn't have like the top hat or anything. It's just glasses and the lab coat. And so he, his whole point was to talk about science stuff. So he has a song that Ludwig was a disguise for another duck. Not, maybe. If he is, I was not aware of that. Hang on. Ludwig von Drake, uh, created in 1961 by the Walt Disney Company, paternal uncle of Donald Duck. So he is another of Donald's uncles, but I think he is separate from all the other characters. Yeah. So yeah, he's got like a white shirt, a blue sweater vest, a red bow tie. Um, either a green or a white lab coat, and he's got like the Pince Nez style glasses. He comes, oh, okay. He's Austrian, not German. Two different things. Uh, <laughs> he comes from Vienna, Austria, and has a fascination with knowledge, has been trying to obtain as many diplomas in any science as possible. So anyway, 
he talks about all sorts of sciences, whatever they are. And so he's got various songs about them. He's got one where he's talking about himself and he's, he's tooting his own horn, which is fun. But he also has one where he talks all about colors. And so when I said red with the rolled R right then, it got the song in my head. I would start singing it, but it's gonna clash with the Animal Crossing music. Let's go check the Abel Sisters. I should probably not whistle on stream. I bet that sounds awful over the mic. Drop a in front of Bamble and see how long it takes her to find it. Oh, 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 she found it. Okay. <laughs> there was a delay and then the nose twitched and she picked up her head and she looked and went, oh, food. <laughs> All right, we always got to talk to Sable first. I have met Label. <laughs> Not a problem at all, Sable. I have my own shy with stranger days. I don't want a shirt that has earbuds attached to it. Thank you very much. The aviator jacket's cool, though. Fucking tuxedo. Market auctioneer's cap. <laughs> Ha ha. Obviously, we gotta make a match. The ballroom mask. Oh no. Yeah, the Viking helmet. I um, I think I have two of these. I at least have the silver and blue one. Uh, Dags has, I think, this one. It's so fun. Oh my god, it's the ladder shades is apparently the term we're going with here. Honk! Vivian de Socks. High tech sneakers. Why are they called high tech sneakers? What makes them high tech? Whatever. Uh, purchase? Yes, purchase. Don't wear out. I kept hitting that button by mistake on Sunday. Um, so yeah, instead of, since we met our sub goal, we now have a bits goal. Um, bits are basically Twitch's built in. Fuckers better light the fuck up. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the ladder shades? No. Never heard of high tech sneakers? They're like sneakers, but they're high tech. Thanks. <laughs> Honk! Bits on Twitch, for those who don't know, are basically a built in way for you to tip me. So if you cannot afford a subscription right now, but would still like to monetarily contribute to things, um, your less expensive options would be to become a patron because I do have a $1 a month option for that. Or you can tip as you're able by purchasing bits and sending them to me via just a simple cheer message in the chat or um, I believe several of the sound bites that y'all are playing with. Um, the honk and um, the quack are free and I believe the bonk is as well. Let me pull up the actual stream here. Uh, let me fill in this hole before I forget it's there. Yeah, see there, there's the bonk. My sound is off. I will also hit the mute key. I'm just gonna pause the uh, thing there. Library 2.0 is here. I don't need that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, three of the sounds are free, and then starting with the bruh sound, so they're gonna start costing bits. So, if you have the funds and want a less expensive way to contribute without having to subscribe or become a patron, you can use bits either just to tip me or spend them on sound bits as you feel able and they are priced with the bits based on how long they are so the longer the sound the more expensive it is just so that we're not constantly having the longest ones being played back to back that was my that was my fail safe on that let's see if we can get a thousand bitterinos let's 
get this other fossil identified. Keep glancing at the camera to make sure it's still functioning. Yeah, bruh, I found another one. <coughs> Dinoni tail. Damn it! Buy from me, damn it! Jolly good. Please enjoy the rest of your visit. I gotta, I gotta say, though, this is completely off the topic of anything else we've been talking about so far, but I thought the whole concept of follow for follow on social media had died. Am I wrong there? Because no fewer than three times in the last month, I have had accounts find me online, follow me, and comment on whatever post they found that... I should follow them back because they followed me. And it's like, I appreciate you following me, but I'm not just gonna blindly follow your content because you asked me to when I don't know you. So. <laughs> Did follow for follow when I started on Twitter again recently, but stopped doing it because my following tab was just, yeah, exactly. Like you end up, first off, if you do it every time you end up following way more people on Twitch. I don't think that should be. So it hasn't necessarily been on Twitch. I will say that it hasn't been Twitch. Um, I had somebody on YouTube uh, ask me to go subscribe to their channel after they subscribed to mine. And it's like, okay, sure, but there's no guarantee I'm gonna like your content. And a lot of people who do it will only subscribe or follow people for the sake of getting followers back, but never actually engage with the channels outside of that. I don't want somebody to subscribe to me just for this hope that I will subscribe to them. You know, that's dumb. Because I'm not going to go subscribe to somebody else just so that they'll hopefully su su like, no. Yeah, it was somebody, somebody did it on YouTube. And I think I had one or two people on Instagram asking me to follow them back after they liked like five or six of my posts in a row, followed me, and then commented once going, hey, you should follow me back. Or, or, or follow for follow with like a question mark and some sort of stupid emoji. It's like, can, no, no. I, I, I would rather continue to follow accounts on these platforms is Twitter still relevant? Too many angry people. I mean, that's social media. That's not necessarily just Twitter. Um, but yes, X is still relevant. It is still a thing. Plenty of people, plenty of people who said they were getting off of it after Musk bought it are still on it. There's definitely angry folks on all sides. It's, it really is not just Twitter, trust me. There is stuff that gets posted, like there are some stuff that you could post on TikTok or on Facebook that will get a vastly different reaction than you'll get on Instagram. Random Instagram commenters can be some of the meanest motherfuckers, but TikTok can also be like that. TikTok is, several hells in too few hand baskets. <laughs> Facebook is is this weird conglomeration of boomers, Gen Xers, and millennials all trying to keep it relevant. Because they don't want to have to learn any other social media. <laughs> um, and like, I really only use Facebook because I have friends and family that still use Facebook. And so I want those people to still be informed of what's going on in my life, you know? Even if I only get reactions from like, maybe 20 of the people who allegedly care to know what's going on. I don't want to learn 
another social law. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand. I am in the... You, you see the peaceful side of Pinterest. I have seen... I have seen people in Pinterest comments getting just as angry back and forth with each other as people usually consider Twitter to be. I've seen worse on Pinterest before than I've ever seen on Twitter sometimes. Um, it really just depends on what kind of content you're consuming on these platforms. So, you know, you'll scroll Pinterest and have it be be really peaceful and, and shit one day, and the next you click on one picture that's like, it's, it's just a comic. No, and that's just it. Uh, Cause you and Songbird will talk all the time about, about the smutty stuff that y'all will say uh, related to your fandoms. I don't, I don't engage with any of the smutty stuff on Pinterest. Cause it's just not interesting to me. I'm not like, that's not the kind of content that I'm finding there. I find like, a bunch of text posts related to... I'll find text posts related to fandoms, um, or, like, people's proposed, like, people's, like, homebrew stuff. <laughs> I mean, you brought up the smut. You brought up the smut, not me. Uh, but no, people will homebrew stuff for D&D &D all the time, and, like, some of those posts will be so many people bitching back and forth about whether or not it works with the rules. And it's like, can y'all all just chill? So there's that, I mean, oh, and you've got, you've got the hyper feminists on one side who get mad at every man that ever comes across their feed or get mad at every woman who isn't acting the way they think a strong, uh, you know, capable within herself woman should be acting and every single one of them has a different different definition of what a feminist woman acts like so like they're all just tattletaling on each other you've you've got people who are too old to be using social media trying to use it and making absolutely no sense because next door is a whole can of worms where where oh god I swear the posts on next door are getting less and less legible every single day I open that fucking app. <laughs> Something can't just exist. Everything is tied to some grand thing to be angry about. Exactly. Everybody's cringe. Everybody is 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 feeling way too strong of some kind of way about something and everybody just needs to go fucking go in their corner and chill out for 10 minutes and come back and just be nice to each other. If you don't like what somebody else is doing, just scroll the fuck past and don't engage. But yeah, I, I have been there when when Dax has, has been dealing with some of the nonsense on the Warhammer side of social media and it's absolutely absurd. It really does. And it's because you've got four generations now, four and a half, I'll say, because Gen Alpha is starting to interact with the internet now. You have four and a half generations now all interacting with the internet and everything is getting faster so you're hearing about more things more often that are just absolutely atrocious and it's it's ruining everybody's experience hello herodotus welcome in we're having a philosophy discussion apparently <laughs> i should talk to croak Protect the innocent of Gen Alpha. They ain't innocent. They ain't innocent. They 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 lost the the chance to be innocent when when they were born with 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 the other bullshit going on in the world right now. People who would otherwise have been shunned for their shitty takes have an equal mouthpiece to everyone else, and that just layers over. It. Yep. Yeah. Gen Alpha is screwed. It's just getting started. Oh. Yeah, hey, Animal Crossing! <laughs> this was supposed to be a, a, a chill stream, just playing some Animal Crossing! It's especially funny too, because uh, I've been... Um... Oh, that's why it's sparkling. You are watering it. Okay. I've been watching campaign one of uh, Critical Role, Vox Machina, and I will not spoil anything for anybody who wants to watch it. Because, HMK, now that you're kind of getting into D&D, &D, I think you and Alex might enjoy watching it. Um, like, the actual campaign. 
Um, it's long episodes. The episodes are anywhere from two to four hours. Some of them, I think, get close to five hours, depending on what they're doing. But it's it's all professional voice actors playing D&D together. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I think y'all might enjoy watching it if you want another take on D&D stuff. But if not, I totally get it. You know, do you. But I've been watching Campaign 1, and just today, I've... I've watched the episode where they fight Thordak. And that's all I'm gonna say. If you know Vox Machina and Critical Role, you know you know what I'm uh, referring to. See, I disagree. I disagree, Wargris. I very much disagree. I started with Campaign 1 because I wanted to see where it started. And now granted, I haven't watched Campaign 2 yet, but from what I've heard, Campaign 1 gives a better glimpse of your average group of people playing D&D together. Campaign 2 starts getting into this thing of too many of the players trying to be the funny character a little too often. Because uh, Campaign 3's like, really big criticism has been too many jesters, which is a whole thing. But anyway, I, I, I disagree. I think start with Campaign 1. Because it's also nice to see their humble beginnings as just one show on Geek and Sundry instead of being their whole own thing. If you know Vox Machina and Campaign 1, you know what I'm referring to when I say I just saw them fight Thordak. If you don't know it, it's not really a spoiler because you have no idea who these people are. And it was heavy. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those episodes where they all just look at each other and go, yeah, we're playing d and it's fun, right? <laughs> For reasons. <laughs> I mean, again, in the event that anybody in chat has not watched it and plans to watch it, I don't want to spoil anything. So I am going to be that person who does not say things. Whoops. Damn it. Hit the wrong damn button again. Wow! Herodotus, welcome to the coven. Thank you for subscribing. Hello. Glad you could join us. Say the name of it one more time. Say the name of what? What, the, the, the show? <laughs> yeah. I had fun picking the sound bites for everything on this channel. Oh, the show. Uh, it's, um, so them, it's confusing now. Them playing D&D &D is called Critical Role. Campaign 1 is referred to as the Vox Machina campaign or the Vox Machina arc because the party is called Vox Machina. Here, I'll spell it in the damn... No! Why did you do that, laptop? I'll spell it in the damn chat. That is the name of the party in Campaign 1, but the show is Critical Role, spelled R-O-L-E, because it's a pun! And I, I have actually enjoyed it. I was hesitant to get into it when I started getting into D&D, because I had heard mixed things about whether it was a good representation of anything. But having played D&D myself for a little over six years now, it really only made sense that I go ahead and watch it now, because I have an accurate idea of how it works for normal people to play it. Sure. Why not, Sylvia? Part of that one. They wanted to check it out. D and D streams are pretty entertaining. It's so much fun. I really, really like it. Um, and I'm the kind of person that like I will skip through when they take breaks. I will skip through that segment. Yeah. Okay. It's still going. It's lagging a little bit, but it's still going. But I won't. Oh, I won't skip through to watch only the gameplay portions. I will actually watch them chatting about their sponsors and the stuff going on in their lives beforehand, during the break, and after, especially in some of the early episodes when they're getting gifts from fans. Watching their reactions when they're opening all these gifts from their fans is so wholesome and it's so sweet. And I, I, I don't know, I just like, I, I am that kind of person that like, if someone I am, even, even if it's just through a screen, somebody I am engaging with starts feeling a strong enough emotion, I will start feeling it too. And so I can kind of live vicariously that way a little bit. Oh, 